Hey! What's up, you day, Dangle Drangles? <laughs> Over the weekend, I finished Shadow of the Earth Tree, and it was... It was so good! It was a 10 out of 10. I, I had no problem at all, Bob Saget, day, Cynthia. I think it was just an absolute epic masterpiece of an adventure. I had a blast from the second I walked in to the very final fight, and I couldn't believe just how much detail and just... I don't know how From Software does it, first of all. They just, they take the cake and this nice sticky toffee pudding from Hell's Kitchen, and they put that, they put a little bit of gelato on top, and it's just a sprinkle of poop, just for you. But, you know, even though I think it's, it's a 10 out of 10, perfection, spiciest meatball in the world, I do have my own opinions about it. It's not perfect. So I'll tell you those things. So here's a warning before I clap the ass cheeks of spoilers with a five second magnificent mighty bicep flex montage. Yes! Cool! Cool! Falcon! Patch! Okay, and with that, I hope you're ready to go! Oh my god! Hallway pass! No! All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed your spoiler-filled video today. Now nah, I'm just kidding with you. Let's really go. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, oh my God. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, Jesus. You know, it, it really is like an experiencing an entirely brand new game. There's so many places to explore. Items and weapons abound. And Lord crest my lips like bopping open a can of liquid death. <laughs> Oh, <coughs> oh man, that's good stuff. A lot of the footage you're gonna see of me playing, as I, I mean, I played a lot of it with my pals, and we were talking shit the whole time and just messing around. So uh, it's a lot of it's gonna be like, no, I'm getting summoned and doing that type of thing. So I hope that's all right with you. I mean, yeah, you could be a total badass and solo this biz, but there's nothing like hearing, oh shit, and either laughing or wanting to discover what they found because it's really cool. There's also a bunch. To get pissed about. Don't get me wrong. Like, why don't I get? Why, why don't I look good in this setup? I, am I not hot, hot as fuck right now? No, no. Ch Cheryl, come, Cheryl, no! Cheryl, calm down. <laughs> no. I mean, okay, there's not that much to get pissed on about, but yeah, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just tell you about some of my favorite things, okay? Okay, and here we go. First things first. I will share with you my favorite weapons that I found in this game, and uh, here we go. First up is going to be the Pata. I I did a whole run where I did full-on fist weapons, and I loved it, and I loved the range that these bad boys had. And I just, dude, I'm punching people with freaking swords. I mean, what's not to like about that? <laughs> my fourth one, would, it was kind of hard, but it was between the Sunflower and Milady, but I'd have to say, that sunflower had to be my fourth one, even though I used it a ton, and I just love the way it looks. It looks so dark and used and just, oh, it's so cool. It looks like a Tim Burton weapon. Ah, ah, I love it so much. Um, third, I'll say the Fire Knight Greatsword. Now, it's a bummer because I got this one after I beat the DLC, so I was like, ah, shit! But I found it, I was able to farm it, and I leveled this bad boy up, and damn, is it powerful! You can wreck some boys for reals with this thing. Man, I, I, and the way it twists and the way it, oh, it's so cool looking, so freaking cool. Now my second favorite was, oh, it's also really hard to be with my first one. I'd have to say Euphoria is my, my second favorite, just because, I mean, it is so cool. I've never used a twin blade before, but I tested it out and man, it is very powerful. If you're a faith build, use this bad boy. It's just kind of, it's a, it's a very technical weapon because you have to, you have to smack bad boys on their ass a couple times until it glows with a glorious sheen. And then you can use its uh, R2, or I mean, sorry, L2 weapon, or uh, you get what I'm trying to freaking say. And you can just go ham sandwich on him. You just slice beef all day and it's really strong. But then for my first and final favorite, I'd have to say Milady. second I found this beautiful mistress, I hooked it on and I immediately fell in love with the moves of it. It's just so flowy and, and proper looking. And then when you equip this bad boy with a wing stance, I, 
It's fucking over, baby! The, just the way you can soar through the air and slice and dice. But then you can also just use your L2 with the R1 and then flow right into the L, the R2 moveset. It, it's just a perfect... Now let's move on to some ding-dang things that I loved about the DLC. One, let's just go straight on in, baby. I just love the adventure of it. I just love every single FromSoft game adventure that just has to offer to me. I think it was the best. I had an absolute blast with this DLC, and I, I mean, I'm not done playing either. I'm gonna keep on discovering every secret I possibly can, just for the sake of an adventure. The world was just absolutely gorgeous. FromSoft never disappoints. It is always beautiful. Like, look at this right here, like, bitch. I'm trying to start everybody how beautiful the game is. So as you can see, it's really beautiful and pretty. But it's just, I, I, how can you not stop and just stare at the scenery? It's gorgeous! And the land of shadow is... It, it, acceptable! The new incantation spells and just, gosh, whatever they threw at us was all so freaking awesome! My absolute favorite was the pest thread spears because I loved using that. I loved using it against those little bitches. Because they deserve it, because I HATE THEM! ASSES! Another thing I really liked that they included, which I'm not really surprised, is the inclusion of new larval tears. The gypsy larval tears. I was very happy to see those. It was just kind of neat to experience on the map, because you, if you had waited the right time of night, and under the moonlight, you can see these little blue patches by some spirit, uh, gravesides. And you run on over there and BEHOLD! was a brand new larval tier. I just thought it was a really cool way to say, hey, here you go, we know you're gonna be trying all kinds of bull swift. So here you go, you donkey, go respec and, and try out all, all the things we've given you. I think I, my overall favorite thing about this DLC was that I gotta experience something new with my friends. Yeah, I have friends, okay? Jeez, golly, don't have to be like that. But yeah, I just gotta experience something new. And it was fun and like we couldn't wait for the DLC to come out and it did not disappoint. And it was fun to just play with them. Everyone should play games with their friends. And I mean, there's some games that are solo, but you know what I'm trying to say. So shut up! Now on to the bosses. I mean, jeez, they were all bastards in their own way. But, you know, I don't know if I really have a favorite. I think if I'd say my overall favorite just because of how epic it was, it was the Redangus one. Man, it was just, yeah, I got my ass beat harder than my mom beat my ass as a baby boy uh, by Redang, but I mean, it was just the coolest. It was just the coolest one. I mean, what, who, who's, you can't, don't, don't even say anything. But the two bosses in the game that absolutely made me want to arc my piss straight into my mouth was the, uh, oh, the dancing lion. Oh my, hated it. Both of them. I hated both of them. And then, the Gaius fight that's right in front of the freaking Skadgetry, the Black Gate. I HATED THIS SON OF A BITCH! Oh my god, I hated this. Oh, I got so mad. This is the only boss fight. Don't tell my, don't tell my fiance. But I threw my controller on the ground. I was so mad. I was so mad and a screw flew out of it. Yeah, so, fuck that guy. Fuck you! Now, I hate to do this, but... I wouldn't be a true, it wouldn't be a true review if I didn't tell you what I didn't like about it. Yes, I think it's a 10 out of 10, but I think it was lacking in a couple areas. And you'll see, you'll see and probably agree with me on certain things. One! I mean, with the, I, when I, once I picked up the Great Katana, for example, I picked it up and was like, whoa, no way! And then I thought, man, there's probably gonna be a handful of them. Yeah, there are only two more. Same with the, the Light Great Swords. There are only, Three of them. Why? Why would you? Why? Damn it! Like some of like the little dinky little weapons. Like why don't you just remove that and just apply it to the other brackets that you included in the game? I feel like that would have been so much better. And the martial arts, for example. Holy shit! Everybody was so excited as pass for that. And guess what? So hey hey sorry baby boy, but there's only two. You can only get the punchy punch one and the kicky kicks. The high kick, kick, kick. You can only, that's it. Sorry. Hey, sorry, pal. I really feel like they could have kind of expanded on the, if you're gonna make additional weapons and additional weapon types, just, just, just put them in there. Just 
Just do it. Just make more. That's it. Uh, the other thing I'd say is I wish there was more, like, caves and stuff. Like, yeah, there were a handful of caves and catacombs and all that jazz, but I wish that there was more that led you to more lore-heavy type of stuff. To where I could really deep dive and take a look at the lore. Who's that? Where's that come from? Is that how babies are made? Wow, that's pretty neat. But, I mean, it, it's not a really huge complaint of mine. Just a little more of it would have been kind of cool. And this isn't really, this one isn't really a con of mine. I just kind of wished there was, it almost fits onto my next little chapter. But I think that there could have been more NPCs to interact with. That you don't freaking kill all of them in the, in the fucking end of it. So, uh, yeah. I, I didn't want to clap all their cheeks. I wish, it, like, one of them would have lived or one of them would have been, like, significant in something. It would have been really neat if there were NPCs that just kind of, like, lived and existed within the Shadow Realm. Because it's a place where, like, all souls go after they die. They go to this place where it's like, oh, you're separated from grace and you're, it's a veiled existence. It would have been nice to see someone or someones who lived there, who saw the like what Mesmer did how he just fucked an entire freaking culture and saw America like oh yes I knew America before she went into godhood and disappeared to the gate of where she holds up the strands at, like in the DLC trailer like it would have been cool to get some history and try and connect a specific character with something I just thought that would have been really cool but hey you know what that's okay all right, here's my second to last chapter. I thought that there were some missed opportunities that I just, I, ah, man, when I got to these parts, or lack of these parts, I was truly disappointed. It really did bug me in such a way that I just, I couldn't let it go. And I didn't, I thought, okay, maybe they're gonna touch on it throughout the DLC. Like maybe by the time I get the end, we'll be good to go. But no, fuck you. It didn't reach it, and here's here's what was missed. First of all, the Glomide Queen. Where the hell's nipples was the Glomide Queen? This was like this was something that I feel like every lore digging fan was so excited to see more on. I mean, there wasn't anything when it came to Melina, how it's like, oh man, maybe she's the Glo Glomide Queen, brother. Maybe the cream will finally rise to the top. But it didn't. It, it never did. And this, the Glomide Queen is a big deal. She's a big deal. She's America's nemesis. I would have thought we would have seen at least some sort of remnant that she left behind. Or you see like a corrupted version of her because her soul lives on. If she's strong enough and powerful enough to be America's nemesis, why the fuck was she not in the DLC? I, I No, I can't let it go. I just can't. Ah, <sighs> this one really disappointed me big time. Yes, I know, that's a 10 out of 10. But why? Why would you not include Godwin? This is the realm of Shadow. He was the first of the demigods to die. But you didn't include Godwin in the DLC that is about a, like, a dead realm. Why? Why would you do this? I mean, even his, his iconography is in some of the catacombs with some of the Death Knight fights. You can see it just sitting there in the background. It's like, okay, well, why, why, why is his iconography right there? And then he's just nowhere to be found or talked about or seen or anything in the DLC. Nothing. And I thought that that was just such a, an, a, a missed, like, flop of an opportunity of something that you could have made super cool. Why was he not a boss? Why was he not the consort? to Mikola. Why, like, okay, I understand that you reused Moog's body and you used Radon's soul. Why didn't you just combine the two and recreate Godwin? Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But for well, Miyazaki, son. Accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Chemical. Dirt. Thus the Consort Radon. We're born! Which was kind of Mikola's one of his biggest reasons for being. He wanted to give his brother a true death. And th th there was nothing about that. Nothing. And I just thought, 
What a wow! Holy shit! The other thought, little tiny. This is this is tiny. I thought the snake skin in Bonnie Village was pretty interesting. It definitely it was very random, completely out of place, and it just for those who explore and like exploring the game, you'll look at it and go, hmm, what does this mean? Oh, whoa! Why are these berries all poisonous? Whoa! I got a belly ache now. But no, I, I thought that was pretty cool. I hope some people find some lore. Like, I'm going to be watching Xylestorm and Vata Vidya uh, about what they think about it. So, we'll see! <laughs> okay, one thing that I just... Ah! Bug me. So, the chalice um, at the Scatty Tree, like, when you can gaze upon it, that's right after the, the worst boss in the entire fucking game. I don't understand. It has no use, no purpose. But it even on you look at the map, it has an icon, and it's like... This is the chalice. This is the chalice for it. And I don't understand why you put an icon there if it has if you don't do anything there. It looks like a flame is supposed to be long there. Like you're supposed to burn down the scatter tree. Why have we just not discovered something yet? Are we missing something? Has no one figured it out type of thing? I just thought why is this here? Why is it what what's the point of this being here? Why the why the hell would you put a boss like this hard? in front of such a, such a just, oh, well, doesn't mean anything, it's nothing. I guess we'll see. All right, my final thing on this chapter is the finger shrines. Man, I thought those finger shrines were so awesome. They were so cool looking. They just, all these fingers jetting out, all these giants squatting down, sitting on top of them. Wait a second, I don't remember that part. <laughs> I just thought it was so neat that you just kind of see like, okay, this is where the fingers are over here. But the, well, like, why the fuck were they empty? Why? Why was there why was there not like a mini boss guarding the the finger horn that you can suck on? Oh yeah. Like why was there not a boss? Why was there not some mini like or just really hard enemy guarding the area? Or like if if Meter Matera, however the hell you say her name, if she's the mother of all fingers, why was there not like some sort of fingered <laughs> sentinel guarding hey, the, the bells? <laughs> Why? Yeah. And then all of us, I'm sure, the ones who explore, we all ran around freaking everywhere on our horse trying to find something. Something in this area to try and just be like, okay, what's here? Is there anything here? There's nothing fucking there. And uh, bothered me. All right, now here's my final thoughts on the game. And I'll just cut this video out. I'm just going to let it fizzle on out like boil water. Personally, I don't think that it's over. I really don't. I get the feeling that there will be something else, and like, regardless of what Miyazaki says, he's always, I mean, he's like, it's the size of Limgrave, but it was way bigger than Limgrave. It was so deep. I really think that there's something else that we're either missing or he's gonna be like, hey, uh, there's a little thing. Again, the chalice remains. Why would it be guarded by such a hard boss? And it just, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. When you beat Radon and Mikola, it just feels like, oh, oh, it's, uh, it's over? Oh, uh, okay. And there's no credits, no nothing. There is no way to, like, climb up the stairs to go see the gate of divinity. Like, you couldn't go through there, and there's just, there just nothing. It's just like, oh, hey, sorry, it, it's over, it's over now. So I'm curious to see if there's something that's going to be a result of that, but I don't know. But, you know, other than that, I, I really personally don't think it's over, especially with the, the controller drops. Um, like the teaser drops that happened months and months ago, maybe even a year now. Holy shit! But how they're like, well, they're, these are gonna come out for during the those the Thrustmaster controllers. Like these are gonna come out during the. It's gonna be a promo, and it listed two dates. I wish I had the screen. I tried digging around everywhere to see if I could show you what I'm talking about, but where they showed one for the this release and then another one for next year, another controller release. So. I don't know, man, but other than that, I love all of you. I hope you all get kisses and spankies from your mommies and your daddies. I love you. Uh, stay tuned for my next video. Uh, see you later.